Hey guys, welcome back to another J. May Sano video. Today I'm going to be walking you through how we use ultrasound to evaluate the abdominal aorta. If you're interested in a little update on where I am in my program and what we're doing right now, let me know um, in the comments because I'm debating whether or not to make that kind of video right now. But for now, let's just get into sonography of the aorta. The aorta is the first thing that I learned how to scan in ultrasound school. It has a fairly simple structure, which we'll go over, and due to the nature of the aorta as an arterial vessel, it gives us sonography students a chance to learn how to manipulate machine settings, including color and Doppler. The aorta is thought of as two different continuous sections called thoracic and abdominal. General sonography tends to examine the abdominal aorta. Um, the aorta arises from the left ventricle of the heart. This section is known as the ascending aorta. The next section here is the aortic arch where you can see branches to the neck and the head. Those are evaluated with a different type of exam such as a carotid arterial study. The next part is the descending aorta. Um, these sections of the aorta are all within the thoracic region. But once the aorta pierces through the diaphragm, it becomes the abdominal aorta. Blood flows inferiorly through the abdominal aorta. The first anterior branch of the abdominal aorta is the celiac trunk. And following closely behind that is the superior mesenteric artery, also known as the SMA. The celiac trunk branches off into the splenic artery, the left gastric artery, and the common hepatic artery. All of these smaller vessels are evaluated in more targeted studies um, if it's required by the ordering physician, but they're not necessarily parts of the basic aorta exam. Just below the anteriorly branching SMA, the right and left renal arteries branch laterally. Moving inferiorly, um, another anterior branch called the inferior mesenteric artery, which is not commonly seen on ultrasound, arises. And following that, the aorta bifurcates and becomes the right and the left common iliac arteries, which each give rise to right and left external and internal iliac arteries. These vessels, of course, continue to branch off and feed different parts of the body, but this is a good stopping point for a brief overview of the aorta. So now I'm gonna share the protocol that I've learned to examine the abdominal aorta with ultrasound. Please keep in mind that protocols vary depending on the individual institution. And I also want to point out, this is an exam that I did about a year ago, and I did turn it in. It was graded by my professors, so I'll be sharing feedback that I was given to improve my images. Before scanning, the patient must fast for six to eight hours. You'll have the patient in the supine position and you'll grab your low frequency curvilinear probe. Make sure that you lower your output power to comply with Alara. Starting with the probe in the sagittal plane, the aorta is imaged in its long axis and it should appear as an anechoic tube-like structure with echogenic arterial walls slightly left of midline. You should use your overall gain and your TGCs to optimize the image um, so that the aorta is anechoic, while the surrounding structures are still clearly visible and able to be assessed. Be careful not to over TGC and black out any hyperechoic plaque that may line the vessel walls. The aorta begins more posteriorly in the body and it becomes more anterior as it courses more inferior. Before taking any images, you want to sweep through the entire aorta from proximal to distal in long and transverse to look for any obvious pathology, which I'll talk about towards the end of the video. The first image is of the proximal aorta, which we want to show as close to the diaphragm as possible. A good landmark is the crew of the diaphragm and the GE junction or gastroesophageal junction. Depending on the length of the aorta, which will vary depending on the size of your patient, you may be able to image the proximal and the mid aorta in a singular image, but it's completely acceptable for this to be two images. We consider the mid aorta to start where the SMA branches off of the aorta anteriorly. 
you may also see part of the pancreas anterior. After this grayscale image is captured, we place calipers perpendicular to the vessel as it runs through the body, not perpendicular to our ultrasound screen. It's important to measure outer to outer, making sure that you're including the arterial walls. If there's plaque buildup along the wall, it may create a larger than normal diameter, and that is something that must be noted. Then we turn on our color Doppler, adjusting the color scale, color gain, and wall filter appropriately so the color does not appear to overflow or leave out any blood flow. One thing that my instructor commented on throughout this exam um, was that my color box could have been larger since the aorta is such a large vessel. Next, we do a spectral Doppler image to measure the velocity of blood flow through the aorta. And I'll probably end up making another video with a more detailed description on how spectral Doppler works and what all the rules are as well as tips and tricks. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I'll just do a brief explanation. First, we need to heel toe the probe to put a pretty significant angle on the aorta to get the most accurate velocity reading, making sure our sample volume gate is about one third the diameter of the vessel and our angle is less than 60 degrees and as close to perfectly parallel to the vessel wall as possible. And it's placed directly within the center of the vessel. We can begin obtaining the waveform where we will then adjust our spectral Doppler scale, which in this image could have been lowered so there's not so much empty space at the top of the spectrum and spectral gain can also be adjusted to get our desired waveform. As with uh, most of these images and other abdominal scanning, but especially when using spectral Doppler, you may wanna ask your patient to take in a deep breath and hold it to keep everything as still as possible while you're obtaining the waveform. So all of these adjustments must be made quickly to spare your patient any discomfort. Once we obtain the waveform that we need, we will then measure from the peak systolic velocity to the end diastolic velocity. And this information we would put in our final report. It is important to be mindful of these measurements and make sure that they are consistent with a healthy aorta as you sample inferiorly. And if they are not, to document that clearly, as well as any other pathological findings. After prox and mid have been evaluated, um, we'll move inferiorly to mid distal uh, taking a grayscale, a measurement, and a color image. And this is just the area between mid and distal. There's no notable landmarks. The aorta will be more anterior here compared to where it started. So at this point, if you haven't had to already, you'll probably find you'll need to decrease your depth to keep the aorta in the middle of the screen and not have an empty bottom half of the screen. With decreasing the depth also comes raising the focus. As you move the probe inferior from here, you'll notice the aorta starts to taper. That is where it bifurcates and becomes the iliacs. So just superior to the bifurcation is where we'll take our distal image and measure right at the start of that tapering. Then a color and a spectral Doppler image will follow before moving to the iliacs. The right and left iliac arteries can be imaged separately or together, which is called the pitchfork sign. And it is obtained by a more lateral approach, angling the sound beam medially. With the most anteriorly appearing vessel being on the side of the patient's body that your probe is touching. You'll then measure each vessel and turn on color Doppler. I should have taken another image here to show color flow in the area where it's absent in this image. I didn't have a good enough angle on the vessels to get color throughout, which would have been ideal. The bifurcation is a common place for plaque to form, and my images give the illusion of that due to that apparent localization, um, kind of lack of flow area. Now uh, we'll move on to transverse. The first thing you'll wanna do is decrease the sector size to optimize the image quality and focus in on your area of interest. 
The aorta will now appear as a round anechoic circle with echogenic arterial walls surrounding it. Uh, we'll begin proximally again with the probe just below the xiphoid process. A deep breath in by your patient will push the diaphragm down so you won't have to push on the patient's ribs. The landmarks are the celiac trunk, which may appear as the seagull sign, demonstrating its three branches. And you may still see the crua of the diaphragm. AP and transverse measurements will be taken and should be almost equal. If the transverse measurement is greater than the AP, you might be applying too much pressure, but sometimes pressure is required to move bowel gas out of the way. So it's all about balancing those two things and getting the aorta as round as possible. A color image will accompany every grayscale image in transverse just as it did in long. Moving inferiorly to transverse mid aorta, we'll see the SMA and the renal arteries. You'll need to decrease your depth and raise your focus as you move inferiorly. We'll take measurements and a color image at mid distal and at distal. This is where it can be really tricky for me not to squish the aorta with too much pressure because this is usually a pretty gassy area. If you go distal enough, you'll see the aorta appear to enlarge where the bifurcation is happening. We don't wanna falsely measure an increased diameter here, so distal should be measured just superior to this area to get the most accurate measurement. Then you'll see the singular anechoic circle split and become two. That is the right and the left iliacs. Measurements and color will be done here. The right and left measurements should be very similar. If one is more oval than round, you may need to adjust the angle you're coming from. You can come laterally and angle inward similarly, similarly to that pitchfork sign in long. Um, the patient's belly buttons are also often in the area of the bifurcation, so you can try angling from above or below it. At this point, any pathology that was noticed should be imaged in long and transverse with measurements and color, and you can even do a cine clip if you think that'll be helpful. And you should do a final sweep through um, to make sure you haven't missed anything. And then that completes the aorta protocol. So I wanna quickly discuss some common pathologies seen when scanning the aorta. An aortic aneurysm appears as a localized dilation of the aorta greater than three centimeters. A ruptured aneurysm can appear as a hematoma. A pseudoaneurysm appears as a bulge off of the aorta with a neck and the yin-yang color doppler sign. Aortic dissection is a tear in the wall appearing as two channels and possibly a flapping echogenic line. These can all be fatal, so it's key to recognize the difference between normal and abnormal when examining the abdominal aorta. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful and not too boring. I'd love to hear if your protocols differ from mine at all. Um, I'm gonna get started on my next protocol video right away. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching, bye.